Praise the Lord. This is the true worshiper of God. You've seen the title. Jesus said also, those who fellowship with me on the channel, call to repentance, daughter of I am, Athena, amen, Andrew. Um, who else? Oh my God, why do I get stuck? Peace Treaty Petey. Yes. And it's, it's so many of you. My mother, Helen Smith. I just want to thank all of you for accepting the invitation that I gave um, to those who fellowship with me on the channel. Um, Yvonne Luke, Michelle Jackson. I want to thank you guys. Um, Deborah Emert. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for um, checking out Richard Luke Jr.'s message, Overcome the Stain of Guilt at Richard Luke Jr. on YouTube, a.k.a. The Preacher. That's who I call him. I call him the preacher, but you guys know him as Richard Luke Jr. I just want to say thank you. I hope that message blessed you. It has blessed me over and over. I find myself looking at it um, several times. I had to step back from bringing the message because I wanted everyone that went to his channel and listened to the word to let that word just, just soak in. Because it was God's love, God's grace, and God's mercy. And the illustration he used of King David, oh my God, that was an awesome, awesome example. Amen. Because a lot of us carry around guilt of the sins that we have committed. And I want to talk to you today on some similar things. The title of this message is, Jesus Said. And the Holy Spirit let me know that how we treat people is going to determine where we spend eternity. Either we are going to spend eternity with Christ in heaven, or we are going to spend eternity in hell. And all that is based on how we treat one another. Amen. Come with me to Matthew chapter 25. Let's look at verse 31, because I, this is very important. I know you guys seen it before, but maybe you haven't seen it the way I'm going to bring it to you. Amen. Come with me to Matthew 25, verse 31 to verse 46. The name of this message from the New Living Translation is Jesus said. Amen. Verse 31, Matthew 25 reads, but when the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit upon his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered in his presence, and he will separate the people as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come you who are blessed by my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the creation of the world. He's letting those know that there is a kingdom that you have inherited. You have inherited the kingdom of God that has been prepared for you, that was made for you from the beginning of creation. Keep that in your mind. Amen? Verse 35. For I was hungry, and you fed me. I was thirsty, and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me into your home. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you cared for me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous ones will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry? Huh? And feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink, or a stranger and show you hospitality, or naked and give you clothing. When did we ever see you sick or in prison and visit you? 
And the king will say, verse 40, New Living Translation, I tell you the truth, when you did it to one of the least of these brothers and sisters, you were doing it to me. I want to tell you who the least of God is. Who is the least? Of the Almighty God. Who is Jesus talking about? He says, When you did this for me, Amen. When you did this for the least of these brothers and sisters, you were doing it for me. You were doing it to, to me. Amen. And first and foremost, the brothers and the sisters were the followers of Jesus. They were the disciples of Jesus. I don't want you, because a lot of people exclude the followers of Christ. They think Christ is just talking about somebody that's homeless. They think Christ is just talking about somebody that's in jail. Oh no, Jesus was talking about his disciples. Also, let's keep reading. Let's keep reading. Mm, mighty God. Woo. Then the king will turn to those on the left and say, away with you. You cursed ones into the eternal fire prepared for the devil. And his demons. For I was hungry and you didn't feed me. I was a stranger and you didn't invite me into your home. I was naked and you didn't clothe me. You didn't give me clothing. I was sick and in prison and you didn't visit me. Then those on his left will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick in prison and not help you? And he will answer, I tell you the truth. When you refuse to help the least of these brothers and sisters, you were refusing to help me. And they will go away into eternal punishment but the righteous will go into eternal life. So who are, who are my brothers and sisters? Who are Jesus' brothers and sisters? One day Jesus was healing a sick girl. And the Bible said that his mother and brothers and sisters were knocking on the door while Jesus was inside with the family of believers who had faith that he will heal their child and bring her back to life. And the people came to Jesus. There was a knock on the door. He said, Jesus, he interrupted Jesus. He said, your family is knocking at the door. Your brothers and sisters are knocking on the door. They want to come in. And Jesus says, who are my mother and my brother and my sisters? My brother and my mother and my sisters are here with me doing the will of God. Do you hear me? So the brothers and the sisters, amen, are the ones that are doing the will of God. And Jesus calls those people the least of his. We are considered the least 
of his. Because Jesus already said they are going to hate you because of me. And if they hate you, they're definitely are not going to clothe you. If they hate you, they're definitely are not going to visit you if you're sick. Am I talking to somebody out there today? If they hate you, they are not going to invite you in for hospitality. Am I talking to anybody out there like that? I know I've been treated like a dog like that by a whole lot of people who call themselves children of God. Woo! Got me fired up. Glory to your name, Jesus. I thank you for this word. Am I talking to somebody out there today? Helen Smith knows who I'm talking to. She, she knows what I'm talking about. Athena knows what I'm talking about. Richard Luke Jr., you know. Joseph Brown, you know. They call themselves family. They won't visit you when you're sick. Won't feed you if you're hungry. Or give you water if you're thirsty. Won't visit you if you're locked up in prison. Am I talking to somebody? Jesus said, if you did it for the least of my brothers and sisters, you did it for me. Come on, somebody. Woo, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come with me to Revelation chapter 22. I want to show you something. Oh, mighty God. I know that hit somebody today. I know that hit somebody today. Hallelujah. Look at Revelation chapter 22. New Living Translation. Are you still with me, saints? Woo, verse 14. Bless Look at verse 14. Blessed are those who wash their robes, huh? who have been cleansed, who have asked for forgiveness, who have accepted Christ in their life, who, are, who have picked up their cross daily and are following Jesus. Blessed are those who wash their robes, amen, who have been cleansed by the blood of Jesus. They will be permitted to enter through the gates of the city and eat the fruit from the tree of life. Verse 15, outside the city are the dogs, the sorcerers, the sexual immoral, the murderers, the idol worshipers, and all who love to live a lie are on the outside. Amen. How you treat people is going to determine where you spend eternity. Because these people on the outside used to be you and I. So how did we come from the outside? Two in the inside. Jesus is going to tell you how that was done. Woo! Verse 16, I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give you this message for the churches. I am both, both the source of David and the heir to his throne. I am the bright and morning star. I'm going to tell you. How we, who used to be dogs, went from the outside to the inside and able to enter the gates of heaven. But how come these are still on the outside? Jesus said, because when I was hungry, they didn't feed me. And when they wouldn't feed you, 
They was refusing Jesus. When they didn't love you and take care of you and looked out for you and invited you in from the cold, when you was homeless, you family, right? But you didn't do that. You ain't family. You fake family. You's a dog. That's why you on the outside. Jesus said. Woo! Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 6. We're going to get through this one. Got me fired up. You know if you're on this channel with me, I'm going to tell you the truth. I don't care nothing about fake family. I don't care nothing about them dogs who want to call themselves family and call themselves children of God. But to drag your name through the doggone mud won't and kick you in the hole and won't even look back to see if you fell in right. Who? Jesus says, my family, my brothers and sisters, my mothers are here right here with me doing the will of God. Who? 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Come with me to verse 9. Don't you realize that those who do wrong will not inherit the kingdom of God? Huh? You done wrong. Jesus said, when I was hungry... I'm going to say to them on, my, on the left, when I was hungry, you didn't feed me. When I was naked, you didn't clothe me. You talked about me like a dog. Well, I don't know what's wrong with him. Oh, I ain't doing nothing for him. He ain't coming up in here. That's a shame. But you family, right? Okay. Don't you realize that those who do wrong would not inherit the kingdom of God? It's wrong. I, I open my door to strangers and wind up entertaining angels. I see somebody that's po. You got you got you bold enough to ask and panhandle for some money here. Once I give it to you, let God judge you. But you look, you say you hungry, you have you say you homeless here. Take it. Hallelujah. Ooh, let me get, keep going. First Corinthians, New Living Translation, chapter 9. Watch this. Don't you realize that those who do wrong would not inherit the kingdom of God? Don't fool yourself. Those who indulge in sexual sin or who worship idols or commit adultery are male or are male prostitutes or practice homosexuality. Jesus said... or thieves, or greedy people, or drunkards, or abusive, or people who cheat, none of these will inherit the kingdom of God. How, you, how can you say that, true worshiper? Because Jesus said, hallelujah. Verse 11 says, some of you were once like that. Were. Some of you were male prostitutes. Some of you were practicing homosexuality. Some of you were sorcerers. Some of you were committing adultery. Some of you were abusive. Some of you were cheating people. Mm. Some of you were greedy. Some of you were drunkards. Jesus said some of you were. Some of you once were like this. I told you, I'm going to tell you how you got from the outside where you was a dog and all of that. And you keep, now you in the inside. Well, how come we still got some on the outside? I'm going to tell you what they did not do. But Jesus says, some of you right here on this channel, including the true worshiper himself, Were, were once like this. Am I preaching to anybody? Come on. But you were cleansed. You were made holy. 
You were made right with God by calling on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the spirit of our God. That's how you got from the outside with the dogs to the inside through the gates. You called on the name of the Lord. Oh! Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come with me to Galatians chapter 5. Look at verse 19. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, woo, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins. Like these, let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. And those who are not inheriting the kingdom of God are on the outside with the dogs, says the Lord. Uh. Woo! Glory to your name, Jesus. Glory to your name. Come with me to Ephesians chapter 5. Look at the fifth verse. Fifth verse and fifth verse only. Hallelujah. You can be sure that no immoral, impure, or greedy person will inherit the kingdom of Christ and of God. For a greedy person is an idolater, worshiping the things of this world. Are you worshiping things of this world? Richard Jr. told us, a.k.a. the preacher, he told us. We worship the blessing, but we don't worship the one who blessed us. You worship the car. You get a brand new car, you're washing it every day. It must be clean. You're fixing it up, but you ain't fixing up your soul or your spirit. You're worshiping these things of the world. Mighty God. Galatians chapter 5, look at the 20, 24th verse. I got to say this to you. 24th verse. We're going to get down with this. Galatians chapter 5, verse 24. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to his cross and crucified them there. Amen. My last chapter, my last, my last scripture, Matthew chapter 16. This is a miracle that I've gotten done this fast. Matthew chapter 16. You guys must have been praying. Lord, please make the true worshiper bring a short message like Richard Luke Jr., a.k.a. the preacher. Hallelujah. God heard your prayer. Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. Then Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way. Some of your Bibles say you must deny yourself. These mean the same thing. You must give up your own way. Take up your cross and follow me. The cross meant one thing and one thing only. The cross meant death. The most painful and humiliating means of death a human being could develop. In Jesus' day, the cross represented a torturous death. The Romans forced 
those convicted to carry their own cross to the place of crucifixion. Years later, Christians view the cross as a cherished symbol. A symbol of atonement, forgiveness, grace, and love. I don't know why. I never looked at the hangman's loose. I never looked at the hangman's noose as love and forgiveness. I can't look at the cross as a symbol of love. But I can look at the one nailed to the cross as a symbol of love, as my redeemer, as my salvation. But I can't look at the thing they nailed him to. I can only look at him. Do you hear me? It's okay. That's just me. Jesus told me to pick up the cross and follow him. He didn't tell me to pick up him and follow the cross. Oh, I'm going to leave that alone. Y'all not ready for that. We, that's okay. Another time. But right now, Jesus told us to pick up our cross daily and follow him if we want to be his, if we want to be his disciples, if we want to be his followers. I read to you in Galatians chapter 5, verse 25, verse 24, remember? What did it say? That we nailed that sinful nature and all its passions to the cross. The sinful nature is what got you out there on the outside with the dogs. So Jesus says, if you want to follow me, you got to put to death daily, every day, pick up your cross and follow me. Because we're going to kill this thing every day you wake up. Ooh, hallelujah. Therefore, Jesus commands us to pick up our cross and follow him. That's called self-sacrifice. Bearing a cross meant one was about to die. It means that whoever picks up that cross and follow Jesus, you are about to die. Something that you got in you is about to be put to death. Jesus got his finger pointing right on it. He said that right, that adultery. I know. Pick up your cross. Follow me today. All that shoplifting you doing, all that lying you doing, all that anger and that abusiveness, you yelling and screaming at your wife, cussing her out, you yelling and screaming at your kids, you hating your children because of their religious beliefs and all that old stupid mess. Pick up your cross and follow me. I'm going to put that mess to death because you can't get into heaven with them types of things going on in your mind and heart and body. Y'all hear me? Am I preaching to somebody today? Mm. And know this. Once you pick up that cross and follow Jesus, amen, you're going to face ridicule and disgrace along the way to put that sin to death, to put that alcohol, that drunkenness, that marijuana, them pills, that meth, that adultery, your hoish ways, male and female, your sexual immorality. Jesus already seen you naked. He already knows what you're doing. He said, but if you want to follow me, if you want to inherit the kingdom of heaven, I command you to pick up the cross. I picked it up, says the Lord. Now follow me. And we're going to take it 
to the same place I went, says the Lord. And you're going to nail that mess to the cross. You sure are. Yes, you are. You know why? Because it's sin. You got sin every day of sin. And Jesus carried all of our sins on him. And he that's what he nailed to the cross. That's what he killed once and for all. That's how he set us free. But he says, if you want to follow me, you got to do it daily. He did it one time. You got to do it every day. You must be willing to die to follow Jesus because dying to self is an absolute surrender to God. That's why after Jesus told us to pick up our cross, he said, whoever wants to save his life will lose it. You don't want to pick up your cross? You're trying to save your life. But see, see, your sinful nature has become your life, and you want to save that. You don't want to depart from it. You like your hoish ways. You like that. You like stealing. You like selling drugs and killing everybody in your community. You like that. You like the money that you're getting from that mess. You don't want to give up that. You don't want to give up that. And Jesus said, whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for me will find it. Amen. Woo, what God, what God will be. God says, what good will it be for someone to gain the whole world? After he said that, he said, what good is it going to be for someone to gain the whole world and lose his own soul? What does that mean? I lost my own soul because he has just cast you into the lake of fire, into the place with the hypocrites, into the place with Satan, the devil. I read it to you. The dogs, the sorcerers on the outside, all of them. You're not inheriting the kingdom of God. You're going to, he's going to cast you into that place with the devil. That's how you have lost your soul. Because, hey, long as you, you loving the world, the world is paying you and your recording contract, your acting, you showing all your tail, you got your skirt up high, everybody can see your business, you doing it. Oh, you are so pretty, but you have lost your soul. You are so fine. Can't no man refuse you, but you have lost your soul. You are so rich with your swag and your pants sagging, riding around in your Maybach, your Maserati, but you have lost your soul. Mm. Let me ask you a question. What can anyone give you? in exchange for your soul. I'm glad you asked that question, true worshiper, because a lot of them, they have given them money. They have given them fame. They have given them sex. Uh-huh. All of that. They have given them drugs. All the meth and crack you could smoke. All the weed and blunts you could roll up. All the beautiful women you can have sex with. And they gave you that for your soul. And now you are spending eternity in hell. Let me ask you something. Are you willing to follow Jesus if it means losing your closest friend? Are you willing to deny yourself, give up your life, pick up your cross, and follow Christ daily? Are you willing to do that? If it means losing your closest friend, if it means being alienated from your family, if it means losing your reputation, losing a job, losing your life if you need be,
The title of this message, brothers and sisters, was Jesus Said. I'm not going to go any further. I hope and pray that along with everything I have shown you and given you in 222 videos, I hope you pick up your cross daily. If you want to call yourself a child of God, if you have been given the right to call yourself a child of God, Jesus said, if you want to follow him, if you want to inherit the kingdom of heaven, pick up your cross and follow him. Pick up your cross daily and follow him. And let's put to death the deeds of the flesh. Hey, this is the true worshiper of God. God bless you. I love my YouTube family. I love all of you out there. Teresa S., God bless you. LG Payne, my own lane. God bless you. Matt Hall, Mel Ross, God bless you. Peace, Treaty Petey. Love you. Mark the Messenger, love you. Hallelujah. God bless you. Beautiful joy. Woo! That's all I got for you, Richard Luke Jr. Ah, Kimberly Luke. Amen, the Lows, the Monroes, the Jacksons, the Jeffersons, the Bakers, the McCulloughs, the Joneses, the Nickersons, the Joneses. Hey, I love you, the Lows, the Monroes, all of you out there, you know who you are. Pick up your cross daily. Pick up your cross daily. Why? He's coming back. He's coming back. Put down the alcohol, leave the drunkenness alone. Give that weed to the dogs who are, do, don't want to come in. Give it all away. Give it all away. Jesus is coming back soon. If you think hell ain't real, keep playing, okay? Keep playing with God. You're going to find out because the Bible says after death comes the judgment. After you die comes judgment time. Do you hear me? Hey, I love y'all. True worshiper of God, listen, subscribe, thumbs up, do it for this channel, do it for Mark the Messenger, do it for those men and women out there who are giving you the word of God, Richard Luke Jr., hit that subscribe, the subscribe button, you guys, he's his brother, is on fire, he's, he's going to keep giving you the true word of God, amen, like he told you, I, he sinned a lot, we have sinned a lot. We were outside with the dogs. How did we get in? We called on the name of the Lord and we were cleansed and you can be cleansed too. Amen. I'll talk to you soon.